Welcome to Black Onyx. We're discussing the regulatory topic, POPI, the Protection of Personal Information Act, and with the support of Nicole Lerich, who heads up operations for Terebinth Capital, we hope to be better informed. Nicole, thank you for joining us and sharing your expertise. Hi, Andrew. Thanks very much for being here. What is the purpose of the POPI Act? Okay, so the Poppy Act is the protection of personal information and it is basically the primary legislation for the protection and the processing of personal information. Each individual um, has a constitutional right to privacy and it is all about protecting their personal information, keeping it secure, being fair about it, being responsible about it and keeping their information secure. What is the purpose of the information regulator? So the information regulator is a juristic person that has been appointed to provide oversight to the Poppy Act. So they basically um, enforce the, the, the rules of Poppy. They, they ensure that everybody understands the rules of the Poppy Act and they will also handle complaints. They also have uh, res uh, certain um, reporting responsibilities and they will also conduct research. Um, they will give effect to the constitutional right to privacy um, and also regulate the personal information that you um, collect from your clients and the processing thereof. The information regulator will give effect to the constitutional right of privacy and they regulate the processing of personal information. How does Poppy affect our businesses? So Poppy affects our businesses by um, we have to conduct due diligence processes on our current processes of how we collect and also secure as well as process personal information of our clients. So in other words, you will have to look at all the processes that we currently have in place. You have to identify gap analysis and then address those to um, ensure that your client's information is secured as well as the processing thereof. Another aspect to this would be that, uh, that only certain members of staff will receive certain information for the ongoing of business procedures, um, as well as to conduct business with that specific client. So on, on our side as well, we will um, only certain uh, clients, sorry, the employees will um, have access to certain folders. So you will only have access to information that you really need to undergo business operations. The benefit that Poppy will bring is that it allows the business to be better equipped to govern data protection, security and personal information, um, to conduct due diligence uh, processes across, business, uh, across the business to determine where um, the personal information of your clients is, is gathered, the method in which it's done, the method in which it's processed, as well as stored and um, to ascertain your level of adherence. It's understanding what the Poppy Act means and identifying gap analysis and making sure that, these, that the, gap, the gaps have, um, are basically addressed in terms of the Poppy Act. Um, another aspect to this is to only provide staff that, um, who, legitimately, who legitimately require such information to fulfill Terebin's business obligations. So only giving them access to certain information, um, basically the split of, um, of, of staff members only having access to certain folders on certain drives, etc. How do we ensure our businesses are Poppy compliant? Okay, so our business um, ensures compliance to Poppy by understanding what the Poppy Act actually entails. It is having a look at our business processes, and um, ensuring that Poppy is covered in all, the, in all SLAs with our outsourced service providers. We outsource um, many of the functions in our business, such as HR, IT, compliance, and also the administration of our funds. And uh, the protection of, of personal information should be covered in these SLAs, as these outsourced service providers will have access to our clients' personal information. Another aspect of this would be that um, when I'm responsible for a lot of, you know, to ensure that, that um, a lot of these business uh, activities happen. Mm -hmm. And so therefore I also have access to this information, but this is 
you know, it, it then solely sits with me and um, the, it will not be revealed to other staff members, example, like HR items, you know, that it's personal information, the rest of the staff doesn't need to know about those kind of things. Other items that we do is we've got encryption on all our devices. Our, um, we ensure that you, we always lock our laptops and our computers when you walk away from your, your workstation to ensure that other people do not have access to, to your, your information that is on your PC. Uh, when we work from home, we've got, we work via VPN. Um, there, there's a two-factor authentication. Everything's password protected. We ensure that all of our clients' documents are locked away in a filing room, that there's no documentation lying around um, in the office that anyone can have access to. What type of information is being collected from the client in order to render a financial service? So these items that will be collected will be your basic KYC and FICA documents. The, um, we keep this to a minimum and with the Poppy Act they ensure that you will only request documents that are necessary for conducting a financial service with your client. Um, items would be full names, registration numbers, ID numbers, place of business or residential address, contact details, uh, signatory details, um, authorization, who has authorization on an account, ensuring that all of these um, items are also collected and um, are kept updated. That's another important aspect um, of the Poppy Act. How does your organization strive to ensure the integrity and privacy of client information? So we regularly review and update um, our client's information we um, have certain procedures um, within the business whereby we have confidentiality agreements, we have non-disclosure agreements, um, and everything is, is con contractual. So there is definitely legislation there that, that binds you to the agreement. Um, uh, the accessibility to folders is limited to, to um, staff. Um, we update, um, make sure that, that, that SLAs are updated as well to ensure that uh, Poppy is incorporated in all of these documents so that the outsource service provider also remains um, responsible for the privacy of our client's information. Does your organisation respect client confidentiality and what procedures do you have in place? Yes, we definitely do. Um, we do this by uh, locking our PCs so that nobody has access to everything. Um, we have password protection on all devices. Um, we also have a, a filing room that is locked away where all our clients' um, information is filed, not leaving things around, having protocols in place, um, ensuring um, that our um, information on our computers are backed up um, our IT department actually, uh, the, we, we outsource our IT and they do a backup every hour and at the end of every day and this is stored off-site and they are also protected, our SLA protects us um, uh, with Poppy in that regard as well. And uh, well, when we wo work off-site via our laptops, we also have a VPN connection and uh, this is the only way that you can access drives. There's a two-factor authentic authentication on this VPN to access the drives um, on our laptops. Our laptops are also, um, there they, they is an encryption on it called Desklok. So there's a, there are two um, uh, passwords and usernames that we have to use to actually get into our laptops, first of all. And then when you work with VPN, there is also a two-factor authentication that you, it actually sends an SMS to your phone with a, with a specific code. And this code is only valid for 60 seconds. Um, where after you will get sent another code because this code does not work. So there are there, there's many there are many um, procedures and protocols in place uh, for the protection of our drives and our information on our system. What controls does your organisation have to ensure that your employees don't give up information to third parties? Okay, so the the procedures that we have in place every time that we employ someone new. As part of the onboarding process of a new employee, each employee is re required to sign a non-disclosure agreement 
as well as a confidentiality agreement. So they are bound by legislation to not divulge um, any information to a third party. When do you reveal personal client information to a third party? The only time that this will happen, Andrew, is when the client consents to this or when the, a court of law mandates for this information to be disclosed. Those are the only, the only times that you will actually divulge um, uh, personal information to a third party. Are there any fines or penalties applicable for non-compliance within the Act? Yes, there are. There are dire consequences to anybody that, um, that is convicted of an offence in relation to the Poppy Act. Um, there are fines of up to 10 million rand and uh, there are also, there's also an imprisonment of up to 10 years if anyone is convicted of a crime um, re relating to the Poppy Act, if you, you know, disclose personal information of your clients. Each of the f um, fines will be different and they will be disclosed on a case-to-case -case basis by, the, by um, the relevant court. Thank you, Nicole, for sharing your time and your information. Thank you, Andrew. And thank you for tuning into Black Onyx. For more information on this topic and other related ones, please visit our website.